Now back to the student athletes and back to the gridiron. We go back to Murray State football and Mr. Austin Lane. Let's give a big round of applause for Austin. He was one of the most feared defenders in the history of the Ohio Valley Conference. His collegiate career in football took him to the OVC Defensive Player of the Year honors in 2009 and to the National Football League as a fifth round overall pick by the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2010. Lane developed into one of the most feared defensive ends in the entire game. By the time he finished his junior year in 2008, he was an Associated Press All-American and named to the Sporting News' Fabulous 50 All-American list. In 2009, he was the OVC Defensive Player of the Year, an AP All-American, and sixth in voting for the Buchanan Award, which is given to the best defensive player in the nation. Lane left his mark as a racer, SMSU's career leader in tackles for loss and sacks. Lane had a five-year run in the NFL, with three seasons being with the Jaguars and one each with the Detroit Lions and the Chicago Bears. Once again, a big round of applause for Murray State football player, Mr. Austin Lane. And keep the applause going because his inductor tonight is his teammate, Mr. Nathan Williams. How y'all doing? How y'all doing tonight? Oh man, it's a great uh, honor and privilege uh, to be here and uh, be Austin's presenter when he contacted me uh, about a month or so ago. Man, just a big adrenaline rush went through me. I was ready to uh, hit the field again, it felt like. You don't get too many feelings like that after you uh, hang up the cleats and put away the helmet. So uh, anytime that happens, it's awesome. So anyway, I was trying to think of what I was going to say how I was going to say it, and I was just like, hey, why not write a little poem, you know, because what's better than a football player writing a football, you know, a poem? So, so here, here, here we go, um, you know, Dr. Seuss maybe a little bit. Congratulations, Austin Lane, or to some as you are known, A-Train. There is no better teammate to play this game, sweating, bleeding, tackling, and sacking, after being a racer, you are never the same. From Wisconsin, the skinny kid freshman came. Passed out from the heat, needed an IV pumped into his veins. It's safe to say, I don't think those dreads remained. Talk about his work ethic, barely anyone can maintain. Striking fear into quarterbacks, he was a lion no one could contain. To be the best at this game, you have to be a little insane. Austin is a guy who would make you smile, but would hit you so hard, he'd make it rain. Mm. We played for Griff, <laughs> who loved to make us feel pain. Little did we know, it was only for our game. High character and man in the mirror was always ingrained. In Austin, I know this was obtained. He made good grades and used his brain. But on game day, he was as fierce as a mighty war plane. The D-line was his terrain. Even playing with a torn peg, he would never complain. As an All-American, you had to be the strongest link in the chain. Training hard and making planes was better than the best champagne. His energy and passion few could sustain. How a guy that tall could power clean 350 plus pounds, I cannot explain. <laughs> After college, the NFL became his domain. Landed on the cover of East Bay Magazine, looking tougher than John Wayne. <laughs> Playing multiple years in the league was his aim, and just like Batman, he conquered his bane. After football, his passion and drive never waned. The octagon and mixed martial arts became his new campaign. Austin, when I'm old and using the cane, I will always remember how hard we pushed each other and could not be tamed. Still young and strong, who knows what else you will obtain. But for now, let's celebrate because you are now a member of the Murray State University Hall of Fame. <laughs> So I didn't know I was going to follow that tonight. Um, thanks for the pressure. Nate, appreciate it, man. 
Listen, when Dave asked, I'm going to fix this real quick here so I can get it. So when Dave Winder asked me to have my presenter, only one name came to mind, and that was Nate Williams. And if you guys know football, you know Nate Williams. He's, he's a Murray product, went to, school, went to high school around here. But the thing about Nate Williams, he's the leading tackler all time in Murray State history in the single season and career totals. I don't care about that, though. There's, the, there's, there's one reason why Nate presented me tonight. And the story is the fact that when I got here, being that skinny kid from Wisconsin, um, I had to turn to somebody. And Nate was the leader. Nate set the standard. And throughout my entire career, I watched Nate Williams overcome injury after injury after injury and somehow come back stronger. I saw the dedication that he put in the weight room. I saw the passion that he brought on the football field. And I saw the respect that he gave the community. Nate Williams was the standard, and I was just trying to reach that standard. So in Nate Williams' case, it was only right that I follow him one last time while I'm getting you know, my Hall of Fame nomination up here, because he, he set the way for me, and I want to follow him one last time. So props to Nate Williams. I want to give props to all the other athletes getting nominated tonight and celebrating the Hall of Fame. It's an absolute pleasure to be included with you guys, such great athletes from all sports. So give yourselves a round of applause as well. I want to thank Dave, Dave in the back over there, man, for setting this whole thing up, for, for thinking about me, including me in this whole crazy thing. Um, I appreciate you, and I'm sorry I'm bad at reading emails, but I'm glad to be here right now. So... In case you guys don't know my story of how I got here, it's about a 15 minute story and I only got about five minutes, so I'm gonna keep it real short. But long story short, I'm from a small town in Niola, Wisconsin. Population about 1,300. Had 54 kids in my graduating class uh, and zero scholarship offers. Murray State calls me up a week before signing period and offers me a full ride scholarship, my only one. I signed my scholarship to Murray State without ever visiting the place. Real story. I thought Murray State was in New York. <laughs> it turns out it's in Kentucky. So you're probably wondering how that kid from that small town goes to Murray State and then ends up here. And yeah, it's dedication, it's the hard work, you know, it's the performance on the field. But honestly, the biggest thing to me is that I'm a fact that I'm a product of my own environment. And I'm a product of the people that I surrounded myself with, like Nate Williams. And when we're talking about my, the product of my own environment, the biggest person is my mom. And my mom's here tonight, and I'm, I'm gonna call you out a little bit, don't cry. Just, just wave and say, yeah, so, so, so. So, uh, I got millions of stories about my mom, but the biggest one is my freshman year, my very first practice, I'm sitting in the locker room, and it's just helmets. We, we, we're not in full pads yet, just helmets. And uh, Coach Griff goes, we got county fairs today. Didn't know what a county fair was. I heard, I heard the phrase county fair. I've been to county fairs. They sound like a blast. I love county fairs. So the county fair ended up being a seven station circuit. And that was the first thing we did at practice. I got to station number five. I kid you not. The next thing I remember, I'm on my back looking up and there's paramedics over me. I ended up getting heat exhaustion and passed out. This was my first practice, mind you, of my college career. And I wasn't even full pads yet. So... Needless to say, it gets a little warmer here in Kentucky than it does in Wisconsin. So I'm sitting in the hospital, and I'll be honest, I'm like, I don't think Murray State's for me. <laughs> if, if I can't cut it one practice, how am I gonna survive for four years? So obviously I called my mom, you know, my, my best friend. And I called my mom, I go, Mom, uh, I don't think this is for me. I don't think college football's for me. Um, I can't make one practice. I wanna come home. I don't wanna be here anymore. And I'll never forget what my mom told me, and it's something that she's always preached in my athletic career, whether it was track, basketball, hockey, whatever I was playing, soccer. She always told me, just give it two weeks, and if you don't like it, you can come home. But if you start having fun, you have to stay. So I'm like, all right, I can, I can go ahead and deal with that. So I got, I got acclimated to the heat and everything, and then lo and behold, I started having fun. And it's things like that. It's my mom preaching me that, Sure, stats are important, everything, and all the accolades are cool, but as long as you're having fun with your friends, uh, that's all that matters. So, thanks to my mom.
Obviously, when we're talking about family, I have to give uh, some props to my in-laws who made the trip from Wisconsin as well. This is their first time in Murray State. Sorry we couldn't go to Salmon's Bakery today. I wanted to take you guys, but we, we got here too late. But believe me, it's good stuff. Um, I have to give props to my wife, Cody, and my, our beautiful son, Ronan. What's up, dude? Uh, when, when we're driving here, and I kid you not, he said, can we give Dad the best Dad of the Year award? We're talking about the Hall of Fame. So it's been a pretty sweet day being in the Murray State Hall of Fame, and now I guess I have the best dad of the award, uh, the, the year award coming my way pretty soon as well. So what's up, dude? Um, I also want to thank Matt Kelly real quick. I, I, I think couldn't make it tonight, but a lot of athletes in here know Matt Kelly. And I opted to leave early from the university to go pursue my dreams in the NFL. And when I did that, I had to put the school behind. Matt Kelly, when I got to the league, was the guy that was calling me every single day, telling me, I got to finish, I got to finish, I got to finish. Sooner or later, I got so tired of him calling me, I'm like, fine, I'll finish my degree. And you know what? It's probably the best decision I ever made. And that was a promise that I made to my mom as well. So thank you to Matt Kelly for pushing me to, to graduate from State University. I want to give a quick shout out to Fulton Hart, who is uh, our head athletic trainer. Um, Obviously, as Nate shared, I played with some injuries, and he was the guy that could keep me upright. I probably saw him more than I wanted to, and he probably saw me more than he wanted to, but it was a mutual relationship, so thanks to Fulton Hart and the, the whole entire athletic training staff. Um, thanks to my teammates. You know, it's good to have Nate here. I see Brock over here. Um, you know, it's crazy because football, as a lot of you know, it is a game of indi individual stuff, you know, and the reason I'm up here is because some of my stats. But there was 10 guys on that defense that also made it work. And because they did their job, I was allowed to do my job. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, people were always asking me, like, what, what were some of your best moments of playing football? Was it, you know, playing in the NFL, yada, yada, yada? No. It was, it was the locker room. It was debating when we got a brand new TV in. Are we going to play BET or CMT today on, on, on the radio? Um, it was guys having dance-offs in the locker room. It was just, it was the stuff that I really can't share up here. But uh, those are the memories I'm taking with me forever. So thank you to all my teammates out there. Um, obviously my coaches, you know, and, and they say a good coach can win a game, but a great coach can change a life. And when we're talking about great coaches, I have to say, and unfortunately he couldn't be here because he's coaching right now, actually, uh, my defensive line coach, Johnny Jernigan, um, who was the father figure when I came here. Um, a quick tell you a quick story about Coach Jernigan, and people want to say, what was the moment that you knew you'd go to the NFL? Wasn't in grade school, wasn't in high school, it was going into my junior year of my college career. And I sat down with Coach Jernigan at the time, I started, you know, two seasons as a uh, freshman and sophomore, I thought I was good, you know, like nobody could touch me. And Coach Jay sat me down and looked me dead in the eye, and he said, you're underachieving. You're not reaching your full potential. Now, I'll be honest, at the time, I was upset, and I might have had a few choice words for Coach Jay, but Coach Jay saw the potential in me before I saw it in myself, and that man right there is the, one of the main reasons why I made it to the NFL in the first place. So shout out to Coach Jay. Uh, I guess in closing, like I said before, I understand that I'm up here right now talking to you guys because if you look in the record books, I have a lot of sacks and I have a lot of tackles for loss. And it was funny, I was talking with some of the older guys and they're saying, yeah, you broke so-and-so's record. I'll be honest with you, I can't tell you how many sacks I have completely. I can't tell you how many tackles for loss I have because I really don't care about that. Um, to me, and if you remember me, if you see my picture in the hall, whatever it is, don't think of the guy who was a good defensive end who had you know, whatever quarterback sacks. Think of me of the guy who got offered by Murray State when nobody else gave him a chance. Think of the guy who Murray State kind of took a blind shot in the dark at, and I, and I did the same back. And think of the guy who worked hard every single day, whether it's in the classroom, on the field, to try to make that right with Murray State and say, thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. So with that being said, go Racers, and you all have a good night.